from Hollywood, it's the, 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 the Tom Micah Show. Oh, God. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Micah. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Micah Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's an every kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Right down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-TOM. Six, six. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. And uh, thank you for hanging in. Yesterday I was, the, the phrase sick as a dog would not describe how sick I was over the weekend. Holy cow. The snot factory was in overdrive over the weekend. I, as, as everybody knows, I'm the king of snot. And uh, this past weekend, uh, my cup runneth over. Holy cow. Oh. There's some crud going around. I don't know what it is. But I was uh, literally, there were like buckets of snot. I mean, it was out of control. I'm a snot machine, baby. Wow. So, uh, anyway, I have... Uh, for the most part, recovered. I want to thank the folks, by the way, at Vicks. That NyQuil is what rescued me. Mainly because I was able to sleep for 12 hours last night. 12 hours. Holy cow. You ever get to that point where you're like rolling over and rolling over and rolling over? You're just trying to get the snot to move from one side of your head to the other? And you kind of hear it going... As it goes from one side of your head to the other? Yeah. That's where I was. Oh, yeah. I just want to give you the whole... I want you to get the whole snot perspective here. But finally, the... Uh, I, my head felt like Cedar Rapids, Iowa. To make a comparison there. Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Hello. Can't hear you. Call it. Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Hello. I can't hear you. Uh, hello. Hello, Larry. Put the bubbles back in there. I gotta say, let's put the bubbles back in. Hey, hello, Larry. Uh, I just call from Cedar Rapids, Iowa. I just want to tell you that my wife and I, we plan to rebuild. That's right. We live by the levee now for 61 years. Nothing's going to change now. We're going to rebuild. That's right, Larry. Just want to see everybody out there. They don't give up hope. Yeah, we're uh, we're uh, kind of hanging on to a BF Goodrich Tower here. We're floating down Main Street, but don't worry. We're going to rebuild. <laughs> All right, that's enough. Yes, yes, yes. Anyway, <laughs> this is what you do when you're sitting home all day long. You, by the way, I was otherwise physically capable of working. It's just that I sounded like my head was full of snot. And so I'm just sitting there watching TV, and uh, there's all that video of Cedar Rapids, Iowa. What is it about Cedar Rapids, Iowa that makes you want to do a Larry King? Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Hello. It's one of those places you've never been before. The only time you've ever heard about it is when Larry picks up the phone. <laughs> Seriously. And now, uh, now the, uh, the water is uh, above window level. Oh well. Good luck to them. Anyway, um, a number. Your topic tonight, All right, anyway. Ace. Get, 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 come on, I'm getting with the program here. Um, a number of you, including, by the way, one person who 
I think tried to disguise it, but didn't realize that his signature is stamped on every email. And uh, so is his uh, the domain name. Somebody who works over at Telepictures, which is the company that produces the TMZ television show, they happened to email me this story that was, by gum, it's on TMZ.com. And then a number of other people also emailed it, so I thought, all right, I'll use it. But again, I am quoting TMZ here. Because I want, uh, in, in case there's any liability here, I want Harvey Levin to take full responsibility. Harvey Levin to the people at Telepictures, okay? This is not my material. I don't know this to be true. I am taking the word of TMZ.com. Is Harvey getting married today? I wonder if Harvey's getting married today. That's a good question. <laughs> Beautiful weather. It's a very good question. Or is he just buying a promise ring? I wonder how many... You're just getting away from Harvey Levin for a second. I wonder how many gay people are buying promise rings today. Probably a lot of pent-up demand. Oh, yeah, I want to marry you, honey. Yes. Yes, one of these... It's kind of like the uh, Hail Mary uh, diatribe. I'd love to marry you. Uh, here's a promise ring. So are we getting yes. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah, and I, I, yeah, you're, you're exactly right, Dean. The Rosie O'Donnell excuse. She's a, Rosie O'Donnell already has crafted the first excuse for gays not to get married. She won't get married until till gay marriage is legal in every state. So she's just waiting for Alabama and Mississippi to sign on to this, and then she'll get married. <laughs> That's the best excuse of the world. Look for the areas. Fill that space, oh, all right? Jesus. Anyway, all right, this is from TMZ.com. Copyright 2008. Telepictures Incorporated. This has nothing to do with me. I'm not saying it. I'm reading it from TMZ. This is what they claim on their website. All rights reserved by Telepictures Incorporated. A division of Time Warner. So don't blame me if it turns out to be wrong. Because I'm reading what they wrote. Have I covered myself enough here, Mr. Producer? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Here's what it says on TMZ.com. The one thing that's turning Ed McMahon from baller to beggar. Was he an NBA star, Ed McMahon? I didn't know. Plastic. Our sources, this is TMZ.com's sources, division of telepictures, tell us Pamela McMahon... Ed's wife of 16 years is literally spending him onto the street. We hear, says TMZ.com, she's completely oblivious to the late night legend's cash troubles and shops like their life depended on it. Her Amex bill, says TMZ.com, is legendary. According to TMZ.com, the couple reportedly owes nearly 750k to Amex. Uh, TMZ says uh, that's causing an issue for Ed's friends, who are conflicted about bailing him out. They don't want to see their 85-year-old friend foreclosed on and homeless, but they also don't want to encourage Pamela's passion for Prada. And to add insult to injury, says TMZ, now Donald Trump wants to exploit Ed's sad situation for publicity. TMZ says, quote, the blowhard fame whore has made a public offer to help the bloopers star, but that's news to Ed. Trump's only reached out to the public, not the McMahons, as you think he might. A source close to Ed tells the people who are talking publicly, tells us. Source close to Ed tells us. Who's us? Oh, TMZ.com. Yes. Quote, the people who are talking publicly aren't necessarily the ones who are helping. Uh, TMZ says we hear there are others who are quietly trying to assist. 
Ed's rep denies Pamela's spending is the reason for their troubles. The rep says she's not, quote, extravagant. That's the story from TMZ.com. Not me. I know nothing about Ed and Pamela McMahon's financial situation. I know nothing. As far as I know, she could be clipping coupons and shopping at Trader Joe's. I have no idea. Now, let me just say this. First of all, I have been in the position, and without trying to bring up old wounds, let me just say, I have been in the position in the past with some family members who were in financial straits, but they had other people living with them who were not working and were living off the uh, the teat of the family members in question. And I was asked several times why I didn't, uh, you know, cut a big check and bail everybody out. And I said, because I don't want to support the people who aren't contributing. I don't want to support the deadbeats. I only want to support the people who really are in need and, and not the others. And so I did not help, which caused years of squabbling. I'll just say that. But rather than get into my personal problems, which we do so often on this program, uh, let's talk a bit about yours. Specifically, are you married to somebody like this? Somebody like the person uh, we're talking about here that is alleged by TMZ.com to be spending Ed McMahon with the poorhouse, his wife? Are you with somebody who just doesn't take no for an answer? doesn't understand the meaning of delinquent, doesn't understand the meaning of a lot of words like finance charge or uh, foreclosure, and keeps spending like nothing, like, like nothing's wrong. Ever been with somebody like that? Are you with somebody like that now? Could be a man or a woman, although I, I do believe that unless it's a guy with a gambling problem, and there are guys with gambling problems out there, generally these are women gen or gay men. Generally, because those are the people who like to shop. And those are the people who get into relationships so they can have infinite resources to shop infinitely. Now, I did have a relationship with somebody who was like that, but I kept saying no at every turn. I just said no. And I knew when she was spending money, and I just uh, shut off the faucet all the time. And, uh, you know, just like, uh, you know, when you try to uh, stop the ants from getting to the sugar bowl from one way, they come from another way. She tried every which way to try to spend money. And, and I just closed off all of the uh, outlets. So uh, it was just constant begging and whining and stamping her feet until finally I said, enough is enough. Get out. And then it took six months to get her out. No, it took like a year to get her out. Put myself in that position again. Done with that. But I'm curious about whether you are with somebody like this, okay? They don't understand your limitations. They don't understand that this is how much money you make and that's that. They don't understand that you know, having money doesn't mean it's there to be spent. They don't understand that you have to put a certain amount of money away. You have to buy insurance, like buy insurance for your home, fire insurance, earthquake insurance if you own a house. You have to have homeowners insurance. That you've got to pay for all these basic necessities. They don't understand that money needs to be put away, that you need to invest, save, plan, have a retirement plan. They just think if money is there, it is to be spent. People like you, if you are one of these people, have constant arguments. And I'm always curious about why you all stay in these relationships when somebody is literally destroying you. So if you are in a relationship with somebody who keeps spending, no matter how bad things get, no matter what you say, no matter what you try to do, they just keep spending. There you are, you're heading to, you're going to be living at the freeway underpass next to Ed McMahon and Evander Holyfield and that whole group down there. Hammer is probably down there, you know what I'm talking about. Wesley Snipes, they're all down there under the freeway overpass. If, if you are with somebody who is going to spend you into the poorhouse, by the way, the poorhouse, was there ever such a thing as a poorhouse? Is there one now? Are you living in the poorhouse? 
I don't mean in, in, in a, as a concept. I mean, is there literally an address and a zip code for a poor house somewhere? I'm curious. But seriously, if you are with somebody who will keep spending, no matter how bad things get, you've been foreclosed upon, you lost your job, you lost your visa card, they, they're starting to take away your credit cards, and you're with somebody who just can't get the picture and keeps spending. There's lots of people out there like that right now. We're reading about all the foreclosures, we're reading about all the people who can't get loans, we're reading about all the people who are uh, they, being uh, uh, taken to court, record bankruptcies, all these things going on right now. Are you with a person like that? There you are trying to do the right thing, and they can't stop spending. What are they spending the money on? What are they spending it on? There are some people who are so depressed about being broke that they go out and spend money. They go shopping just to forget about it, thereby exacerbating the problem. Are you with somebody like that right now? One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. One eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. So, bottom line is, you're anti marriage, pro slut. Yeah, and most are. guys are. The Tom Likey Show. The Tom Likas Show, 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Hi, are you uh, in financial trouble and living with somebody who is going to spend you right into bankruptcy? It's 1-800-5800-TOM. Let's say hello to Joe on the Tom Likas Show. What's up, Tom? Not much, Joe. Uh, you know, long time listener, I love your show. But... Thank you. You know what? I heard your show today, and this hit a nerve with me, man, because I was with a, you know, lady for a long time, and, you know, we were married. I own my own business, you know, rehabbing houses, and come to find out that on top of her, you know, opening credit card accounts that I had no idea that were even existed, you know, I found out she was actually getting money and taking it out of uh, our payroll accounts, our, you know, cash accounts, you know, they're using using our your money that we use for our cash accounts of business for personal use and just insane and you know total credit cards she must have been we she put us in debt probably about almost fifty thousand dollars so you own a business and she was using your business accounts for this purpose yeah so how did you find out i finally found out like i forgot well no i was doing a setting up a retirement account and you know, they pulled, you know, a credit report, my credit report to find out what exactly I owe and all that other stuff. And I ended up finding all these open accounts for, you know, visas that I had no idea existed. And then <clears throat> my uh, bookkeeping person found it, uh, all kinds of discrepancies with our uh, budget and everything. So the uh, more I looked into it, I just found out that it was her. So uh, you confronted her? I confronted her. Actually, I told her to get the, you know, F out of my house and just cut her. And you, you were married? We were married. And uh, how did she react to that? She thought, you know, oh, I thought I was allowed to do, you know, this. It was, you know, it's our money. We, we make, you know, we make the money together. And I'm like, you don't do anything. You, I, I bust. You know, I bust my ass. You reap benefits of that. And when it came down to us getting divorced, I was lucky enough to have a great lawyer where she didn't get anything because there was too much proof of her actually embezzling from our business. So she got stuck with nothing and the debt, and I got out kind of pretty much free. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I, I, you see what happens. They have that sense of entitlement, number one. And number two, what they do is it's our money. This is our money now. Now that we're together, this is our money, and I can do what I want with it because it's our money. I know. It's um, my whole thing was I'm like, I try to tell her, you know, none of this is really yours. You came in after everything was established. I, I, you know, my dad, he, had, he owned his own construction company. I've been doing construction, my, you know, my whole life since I was 16 years old. She, she never once picked up a hammer. She didn't even know what a nail is. The only thing nailed she knew was when I was nailing her. 
that or when she was going and getting her manicures and pedicures every week and uh, you were paying 75 bucks for that. Yeah, unfortunately, that was the case, too. Sure was. But, you know, I guess if I would have listened to Like It's 101 a long time ago, I guess this would have never happened to me, right? Well, that's what I always say. Why do you need to get married? Why do you need, why buy when you can rent? Well, you know what? I'm a firm believer in that now, and trust me, marriage is never going to cross my mind again. There's plenty of stinky hoes that I can pick up and have a wham-bam and kick them out the next night, you know what I mean? Right. So... And they don't have access to your money, your accounts, your books. N nothing. No, no way. No, this is ours. Work. It's yours and mine, and that means it's ours, and that means I can do whatever I want. Yeah, no, that, that that's one thing, especially now listening to you more and more, Tom, that'll never happen to me again. And, you know, after hearing, you know, this whole thing, I had to call in and tell you, you know, exactly, because I'm sure you would appreciate the outcome that I actually got out of that. But trust me, it was a stressful time in my life, but it's free and clear now, and trust me, business is still doing wonderful. Good for you. So, all right, Tom, thank you. Appreciate the call. Why don't you take me out Kobe style? Let's all go. right, Joe, here you go. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. 1-800-5800-TOM. How do you like that story? Guy's uh, got a business, gets married, he's 28 years old, and uh, yeah, it's mine, it's it's our money, and I can do what I want because it's my, it's our, now we're married, it's our money, and I can do what I want because it's our money. This is what I'm always trying to tell you about. Why would anyone want to get married when you've heard a story like that one you just heard? Why, 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 why would you want to get married? Jesus. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Are you with somebody like that? Somebody who is spending, spending, spending. You can't stop them. You can't stop. They don't care if you're going to end up in jail because you can't pay the bills. They're just going to keep spending. Laura. On the top, like his show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi, Laura. Say Daddy. Yes, dear. How are you? Great. I'm so happy to actually finally be speaking to you. I've been a fan for about three months now and finally get to call in because I heard your topic. I love your show. Thank you. And I did want to say that I'm calling in because um, I'm married to somebody who used to be like that, um, spend money like crazy and... Um, on whatever, pot, gambling, everything. Uh, I have a job as well, and it wasn't until I started making about six figures myself that he decided, okay, maybe we should get things in order. Maybe I am spending too much. So, so it took me to realize, well, if I'm making the same amount of money as you, then really, you really are spending both of our money. It wasn't more of a complaint of, hey, why are you spending our money as opposed to, hey, look how much stuff we could have if you didn't spend so much money or be on your means at least. Well, it, it, now when you met him, was he a pothead? Um, yeah, so was I. So I'm right. nothing against that. All so. right, so no, what happened yeah. here is you decided to change it up and he didn't. Yes. Um, um, no, I have... I actually have no qualms against people who smoke pot. I'm all for it or whatever, you know. Do what you want with your life. But you just don't want them spending any money on it. And I wouldn't say, I'm totally not like against it, but if you're going to be spending thousands of dollars on pot, then I think that's a little much. That When it crosses over into the point of addiction where you're spending that much. Thousands of dollars on pot, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Does he have a cell phone number? Can we give him a ring later? <laughs> That's too funny. I want to see how that addiction is going. Yeah, no. Well, um, pretty much non-existent now, for the most part. He so. gave up pot altogether. I, and that's not, I don't think I really would even complain about that. It's just the idea of, hey, wouldn't you rather own five homes as opposed to five bags of weed? I don't think people see that. I, don't I mean, for example, I, I talked about the relationship I have with somebody who just, I had to stop her at every turn. She was constantly trying to find ways to spend my money, constantly. 
Mm-hmm. She didn't understand that, you know, I held the key to the vault. There was <laughs> there was no way she was going to be able to do it, but she did keep trying. And um, I have just bought this beautiful house up in Santa Barbara County, 20 acres, and I think to myself, and what if I had given in to her demands? This wouldn't be a house. This would be a a 2005 Range Rover. This would be uh, the, the five Chanel bags. This would be uh, how many uh, pieces of jewelry that would sit in a drawer somewhere. That's so true. It's it's kind of like, really, is that all you have to show for it? A bunch of vintage clothing, which vintage really is a euphemism, isn't it, for old? Old, used, and probably never be used again. Exactly. Right. I mean, I I think that to myself all the time. I was with somebody who, if I had stayed with her and uh, gave her what she demanded, uh, she would uh, she would be wearing all these outfits. No, they'd be all in her closet, while I would be uh, you know continuing to work to make more money. And uh, instead, I have taken that money and I've invested it in a beautiful piece of real estate that will hold its value as the years go on. And I will enjoy all the time, not just wear something once and put it in the closet. Exactly. I don't understand people like that. I don't understand guys who, who tolerate that kind of behavior. I don't either. Men or women, it's like, it's, I mean, people, you know, if you want to be a sugar daddy or a sugar mama, hey, that's exactly what you set out to do. But you don't end up with somebody with the intention of them, you know, basically taking a hold of your bank account for is that really why you're actually in this relationship, so you could spend my money? Ask that. Well, some people are, believe it or not. Hang on a second, Laura. Justin, what did you want to say to Laura? Laura, I think he's still getting high. I just grew up with too many people that smoke pot, especially you sound like you're mid-20s. About that. Is that about right? How, how old are you? About mid-20s? <laughs> 28. 28. Okay, and how old is the guy? He sounds like he's 33. About that, yes. Okay, people getting high. I, I just grew up with too many people, and they never ever stop. And I, I really wouldn't doubt that, especially knowing the group of people. You guys, you guys have, do you guys have kids? No. Good. We'll keep listening to Tom's show. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. So you said you wouldn't doubt that, Laura, which means he's lying to you. No, I honestly, I for me, if if you're, I know it sounds totally hypocritical, but pot, it, there's a there's of course that fine line between recreational use, just like drinking, and where it gets totally overblown, where it's constantly consuming your every thought. I agree, but I think what pot does is it 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 crushes people's inhibition. And it just destroys people around them. And it, it is great if you. I have some friends that love to get high. And they get high once a month. They're very successful, and they keep it in check. I totally agree. I think that I think that smoking. I'd rather see someone get high once a month than get drunk out of their mind once a month. It's I mean, the legality issue, whatever. But right. the story you're describing, it just it sounds like the guy is still getting high. He's just doing it behind your back. And you guys don't have kids, and you've only been listening for three months. And I think if you listen for the next 12 months, you're going to realize that this that you sound like you're way, like four cuts above this guy. And that's the great thing that I love about Tom Likas is if you're a woman and you call in and you say you've got a loser for a guy, he's going to tell you what to do. <laughs> he's right. Yes. And that's one thing I appreciate about your show as well, because of the fact that you are inspiring to other people that I've turned you on to. But let's talk about you for a second. Let me guess. You make more money than he does. I do. A lot more. A bit, yes. A bit? (laughs) I'd say um, probably 50% more. Oh, that's a lot. So uh, what does he do for a living? Uh, he works in pharmaceuticals. Well, sounds like he works in pharmaceuticals pretty damn near 24-7. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Uh, what does he do in pharmaceuticals? Sales. Sales. Pharmaceutical sales. So does he, uh, in addition to spending your money on pot, does he bring home any uh, free samples? <laughs> no. Like most people I've known in pharmaceutical sales? <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, no kidding. Uh, fortunately, no, because I'm not into needles, and, and but, he isn't either. <laughs> yeah, but uh, pharmaceutical sales, don't they also have pills and things? Um, not at not as at his office, at least. So as far as you know. Yes, as far as I know. Right. Good point. So he makes what about sixty thousand? Oh no, more than that. Seventy. I would say about one fifty. He makes one fifty. Yes. And you make how much? Uh, uh, uh three hundred. Last year, yeah, about three hundred. That's you make double what he makes. Close to it, I would say with the, with commissions and everything, it's about that. Right. So you guys have retirement accounts, you have 401k, you have an yes. IRA, both of you? Yes. Really? Fully yes. funded? Yes. Uh, any, uh, do you have any investments? Uh, as far as homes, yes. No, no, no. Stocks? I do, yes. Him? Uh, no. No. Uh-huh. And he owns houses too? Yes. See? And, now, at least. <laughs> and debts? Not anymore. Not anymore. No, it took it took a lot of. Well, I'm done with school, and after finishing school, it just. I think it honestly it was the kind of 180 that we needed, because now it's just to show. Well, wow! Look what I could buy with with the money that I earn. And what do you do? I'm an attorney. You're an attorney. Oh, boy. <laughs> okay. All right, Laura, I'm keeping an eye on you. Oh, I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> Tom. You have zero paternal instinct to spread your seed and procreate and be a dad. Oh, well, I like spreading my seed mostly into the other end of a latex condom. It's the Tom Likey Show. Tom like his show. Coming to you from Hollywood, California, IA. At 1-800-5800-TOM. So we're taking a look around. Every day there's another story. We've seen the Ed McMahon story. We've seen the Evander Holyfield story. We've now passed one million foreclosures in America. Stories about how lousy the economy is. And I'm wondering if you're with somebody who doesn't recognize the fact that you guys are in trouble. Or have been in trouble. With that, you're on the edge, you know, making that house payments getting more difficult and, uh, you know, making the basic payments of all your necessities is difficult. And you're with somebody who is spending an absolute fortune and they just don't get it. They just don't get it. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Mike on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Mike. I'm I'm done. Almost ten years of marriage, and I'm ready to DTB. Got married at what age? Uh, Twenty-three. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Tell us what happened. Well, I just bought her a brand new Honda Accord, and uh, three months later, it's not good enough. She wants a BMW. <laughs> Everybody wants a BMW. Yeah, I mean, what's wrong with a good old dependable Honda Accord right now? We got two kids. I just opened a business. I'm paying fourteen grand a month in loan payments. And, you know, let me get through some of these loan payments and get some headroom and we'll we'll buy a house, we'll get something better. But for now, you know, cut me. You know what, when you buy a house, you're not buying something better because when you buy a house you can have more expenses than you ever imagined. Well, she wants a bigger house. She wants bigger cars, she wants, she wants, she wants, you know. And I get no respect, Tom. I got two kids. Father's Day, I I tell her, you know, let's go out, let's go visit my father, your father, and uh, uh, she she says, well, I didn't get nothing yet for them, so I'm waiting, I'm waiting, and she finally gets home, and I feel like, you know, I forget it, I don't want to go anymore. It's getting late. I got work in the morning, I'm working six, seven days a week because I just opened a business, and she gets all pissed off and says, quit acting like a girl. She says that in front of my kids, Tom, on Father's Day. By the way, a business she'll own half of once you go to get a divorce. That's the only reason I haven't divorced her yet. By the way, have you been married 10 years yet? Uh, August 1st, it'll be 10 years. Pal, you better talk to an attorney now. 
Because yeah. once you hit the 10 year mark, mm -hmm. you'll, you'll be paying her alimony forever. Well, I already think I will be paying her alimony forever anyways. Well, we don't know that. So you well, need to talk to an attorney. If I open the business while I'm married to her, then technically we bought the business. But that's together. not alimony. Okay. That's, that's, that's besides alimony. The business is community property. You need to have a conversation today with an attorney or tomorrow. Yeah. I'm not definitely. kidding. I, I'm not kidding you. The 10 year mark in California is critical. I, I, I'm over it. I mean, but you, right. but if you just you know, dawdle around until this fall and you pass your tenth anniversary, it could cost you a lot more. Don't do it. You know, everyone says stay together for the kids, stay together for the kids. But you know what? She's really being a pain in the ass. If she should be thinking about stay together for the kids and not treating me the way she's. Well, at the very least, you need to find out what the risks are of staying with her for your tenth anniversary. And that yeah, means an hour with an right. attorney. Yeah. I mean, you've got to do that today. Yeah. Make the call. I definitely will. This is this is stupid. Men out there, don't get married. It's not worth it. We definitely. hear it over and over and over. Definitely not worth it. There's nothing in it for a man. Absolutely nothing. And women know that. It's but but they, they get you to sign the contract. Yeah. It's just a trap. And yeah. at 23, I don't know what I was thinking. I hope the 23-year-olds of today are listening to what you're saying. Yeah. Take it from me. We're in love, Tom. Those other people don't know love like we don't love. We can't, well, we can't say that word on the air, unfortunately. I'm sorry, but it, that's what it is. Bull stuff. Bull stuff. Yeah. yeah. It's just terrible. I mean, women are just get you by the, the cojones and then just put them in their purse and carry them around and... And the worst thing is they're all jealous of each other. You oh, know, all, I think most women hate other women. The one next door. I think the main reason Hillary Clinton didn't win is because women hate women. Absolutely. Absolutely. Hang on a second, Mike. Uh, ben, what did you want to say to Mike? <laughs> hey, Tom. Uh, Short-time listener, but uh, big believer. Yeah. And I'm listening to this guy right now. I just got divorced about six months ago, and I was married for nine and a half years. And I contemplated about getting divorced for about two years. Finally talked to a friend. He said, dude, you got to get divorced before 10 years comes up or she's going to own you. So I talked to an attorney. Attorney told me basically what my friend told me. He says, if you get divorced before your 10-year anniversary, it's not considered a long-term divorce. So therefore, you don't have to like pay, I would have to pay almost triple in alimony when I'm paying now. And we have no kids, but, you know, I had to give her a brand new BMW, a 330 that I bought a year earlier, had to pay that off and give it to her. And, uh, you know, I had to sell my house and give her half of that, but it wasn't as bad after 10 years. After 10 years, you're, you know what, you're screwed. You are, you're screwed. You're screwed. You're screwed. That's it, Tom. Well, I mean, I don't know up. if I'm screwed now or not because we got married like in court a couple months before we got married at church. So, and that was to buy a house together at 23. When is your real 10 year anniversary of being married in court? Uh, last month. Oh. Yeah, because we bought better a house, uh, see an attorney. What can I say? You better do it. What are you waiting for? We bought a house 10 years ago, exactly June oh. 1st. Oh, okay. your mouth are on the air. Stop it. Frustrated. I'm frustrated. I understand. Uh, I get frustrated doing this job. I get frustrated all the time. I can't say that word. So I think we passed the 10-year mark if it, if you go by. Oh, I'm so sorry, Dave, because I thought you said August 1st, and I'm like, yeah, oh, that's God, you still got time. Yeah. And um, we had the big, huge party at church. Oh, my God. You're killing me. Our... Email address is my name. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. It's the Tom Likas Show.